good evening to all our guests and uh, it's my pleasure to host you on this webinar where we are going to speak all about pursuing a project management course in the US and when I say US I mean in the heart of Silicon Valley and that too under a tuition of less than 15 lakhs. Now before going ahead with the topic I want to lay down a couple of ground rules for everyone uh, in this webinar. So as you can see, there is a Q&A chat box at the bottom. Now that's where uh, you can put all your questions for our expert to answer. Uh, please note that we will not be able to answer any questions right, uh, live, which is if you raise your hands. So uh, I request all of you to use the Q&A box very generously and write down all your questions there so our expert can answer it for you. Now, coming to the topic at hand, which is pursuing a project management course in the US, let me tell you that project management is a highly lucrative and emerging career in the US. In fact, when we talk about this field, the demand for workers in this field is growing even more than in other occupations. And when I say that, uh, by the year 2020, 2027, employers will need nearly 88 million individuals in project management roles. However, the surprising fact is that the industry faces a shortage, which can potentially create risks of nearly USD 208 billion in GDP. Now, to speak more about pursuing this career, we have with us, and uh, we are so privileged to have with us Professor Mary Spark, uh, the Project Management Director, Program Director, and Lecturer at Golden Gate University, a university with a legacy of more than 130 years in San Francisco. Now, without any further ado, I would hand it over to Professor Marie to introduce herself and also the program at GGO. Rocky, thank you for that introduction. And let me share my screen. And can everyone see my screen? Okay. Yes. And um, welcome, everybody. Good evening. Thanks. I'm always happy to um, have folks that are um, taking time out of their busy schedules to pursue um, at further education. So, um, and there, and hopefully, whether or not you pursue this program, you'll learn something about project management. Um, I love this cover slide of the San Francisco Bay Bridge because that is right near where um, Golden Gate University is located. So as Rocky said, I'm Marie Spark. I'm the lecturer and program director of project management degree at Golden Gate University. Um, I also spent many years as a project manager in banking and technology um, at IBM and Bank of America. Um, before becoming a professor. And that's one of the wonderful things about Golden Gate University. All our uh, professors started out in the field or are currently working in the field. A lot of our professors are adjuncts who are currently working in the field. And just to say, we uh, we Golden Gate University really value this upgrade partnership. Um, it's a really wonderful way for folks to have the Golden Gate University experience at home. And what's wonderful about the study abroad program is you have the best of both worlds because you're going to spend part of the time at home and then you're going to come here to Golden Gate University in the United States um, with all sorts of opportunities. And let me dive into project management, what it's all about. Rocky, you said I'm going to tell some things about the demand for project management. Um, but I'd like to start out by asking, what is project management? Is it an approach to doing work proactively and collaboratively? Is it a set of tools and techniques that anyone can use? Or is it a growing profession worldwide? And the answer is all of the above. And I like to say that project management means managing projects so that they don't manage you. Um, and let's talk about Silicon Valley, if we will, because here we are, I'm in, in Northern California, and you always hear about the coders and the um, and software engineers, but I wanna tell you the project management is really what has enabled, is one of the key things that no one hears about that has enabled the tech revolution because projects are the way that you turn a vision into reality. And I'll tell a little bit about the history because the Bay Area has been a hot spot of project management along with innovation. And I like to say project managers are leaders who live in the details because we're invisible to the public and work behind the scenes. Here's a short history of project management. Um, people, in a way, it's kind of surprising. It's such a new field because it really sort of started in the 50s. 
I know a lot of you are from India and you think about the Taj Mahal, that was a pretty big project or the Egyptian pyramids. So projects had been with people for a very long time, but it wasn't until the fifties when people started building construct uh, skyscrapers and space rockets and things where suddenly people began to realize they really needed a better way to manage projects. By 1969, the Project Management Institute was established. It just celebrated its 50th anniversary. This is the Global Project Management Organization. And a couple of years ago, it was really fun. I got to go to the 50th anniversary conference. By the 90s, which is when I started my career, um, project management was booming in more regulated and sort of traditional fields like IT, healthcare, banking, et cetera. But it's continued to boom. And today there's over a million certified project managers around the world. Let me talk a little bit about the Bay Area. So in 1969, when the PMI um, Project Management Institute was established, the number three tap chapter in the world is the San Francisco chapter. Now it actually at the time was the California chapter and it broke off into different sections. But um, our PMI San Francisco chapter is the granddaddy chapter. And um, today, the Northern California, um, Northern California has five chapters of PMI, totaling about 8,000 professional members, most of whom are certified. So this, you can get, get a sense of the network. Those are just the people who are members of PMI. Um, in the early 2000s, Agile was born in IT, expanding rapidly. For those of you who aren't familiar with Agile, Agile is a more flexible method of project management that's key to innovation because it allows structure while you're doing something new. Um, it started out in other places, so it wasn't didn't originate in the Bay Area, but the Bay Area took it like yeast, you know, we have yeast, let's bread rise. Agile is the technique that really allowed Bay Area innovation. And Bay Area, the Bay Area is a real hot spot of Agile even now. Um, so that's uh, one of the things we do cover in the program, but that, that's definitely something that I, I always love showing off because Bay Area is home to Agile. Um, and so as Rocky mentioned earlier, the demand for project management skills is growing. Um, this graphic is from a PMI report. PMI does a lot of reports about project management demand and salaries and such. Um, and what they find is employers are seeing a growing need for people with project skills, and they're not seeing enough people to fill those jobs. And you think about it, we just went through a global pandemic. We have all these things, tech changes in our lives, business disruption. And I like to say in a world with constant change, companies need people with project management skills. And that's leading to the shortage, the shortage of people to do the job. Now, why is that? First of all, there's just more jobs needing project management skills. More people's jobs are just, very few people have operational jobs where it's just, I'm doing the day-to-day -day thing. Almost everyone is in a profession has changed that they need to manage, and that's projects. There's also higher demand in developing countries around the world um, where they're developing um, infrastructure and other things. And then also, especially in the U.S., a huge factor is workforce retirements. Because here in the U.S., we have the baby boomer generation. Um, that's my parents' generation. P those people are all in their 70s and 80s, and they're all retiring. That's leaving a lot of gaps. Let's get into why project management is so important. But the ugly truth is a lot of projects fail. And PMI again does studies about this um, across industries. Um, and what they find is this is pretty consistent. They've done the study over a number of times. Organizations lose about $100 million for every $1 billion they invest in projects and programs. That's not a good number, especially because if you think about it, when you're investing money in projects, you don't want to be losing money. So let's talk about what makes projects so difficult. Because when um, I work with students or people new to the profession, people are always surprised. And some of you on the call might have been on a project where you're like, why is this so hard? So let me tell you why. So first of all, risk and uncertainty, because the de definition of a project is you're doing change and creating something new. Deadlines, we all know there's never enough time to get everything done. Then there's other constraints in addition to limits on time. You never have enough money or people. Also too many cooks because you need to get agreement and problem solve with people who are very different. You might be working with a marketing department and a finance department and an IT department. And then also as a project manager, you're managing without authority. So you may be responsible for a whole bunch of deliverables, but all those people, they're not working for you. They're working for their departments and they're um, you're having them work. So you're sort of responsible for their work, but you're not actually the person who manages them. And finally, I love this one, the optimism bias, because I'm a professor. 
and I'm a recovered procrastinator, um, there's a human tendency to have unrealistic expectation about outcomes. So when I was a student, I put things off to the last minute. And that's where I really relate to the optimism by it's the number of times I stayed up late to finish a paper. I really over was over optimistic about my ability to finish it. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about um, skills required for project management and why uh, why would you want to pursue a graduate degree project management? Because there's certification. And I know I get to ask that kind of question a lot. Let me share with you the PMI, PMI's talent triangle model. What PMI really, so when I started project management, the focus on project management was in those that blue arm, which is the technical project management skills. Those are things like scheduling and budgeting and all those things. And they're still important. But what PMI's come to realize is that it's, you know, in this today's dynamic environment, you also need leadership skills, team management skills. Those are the ones in the green bar. And then also a lot of projects are really require specific business and strategic knowledge. That's the purple bar. So that's where, um, you know, certification is great because I'm PMP, but um, this is where it's really uh, the graduate program gives you more depth. Here's some pro uh, an outline of some project management skills. So first of all, the first one there is more is definitely more of the project specific skills, understanding the project life cycle, including scheduling, budgeting, and overseeing the work. But then there's leading co team collaboration across functional lines, communicating and facilitating at all levels from senior leadership leadership to entry level staff. And PMI says that communication of all types is about ninety percent of a project manager's job. Conflict resolution and problem solving. Um, focused on coordination rather than doing the work itself. So I find when people um, going for a degree like this, this may be some of the change because they might be people who were professionals who did a technical job or has sort of a more functional role. Project management is a leadership role. And you're leveraging other people's knowledge to your best results. Um, let's talk about the PMP certification versus a graduate degree in project management. Again, I have a PMP. It's been very valuable to me. PMP is definitely worthwhile. And I know we're going to be talking, there, there's uh, definitely some PMP opportunities in the program. But um, PMP is mainly valuable if you already have a lot of experience and it identifies you to recruiters. Um, but, you know, if you're new to the field, if you're trying to grow in terms of going from junior to senior PM, those things don't really help you become a better project manager or grow into the role. So graduate project management education is really what will help you sort of embody the role, think like a project manager. All right, so let me dive into the master's science and project management curriculum. Uh, by the way, so I'm gonna talk about this and then I know a lot of people are interested in, in internship and career opportunities. So I will be covering that as well. But let me start about the curriculum. So um, we have three concentrations for this master's in science and project management, uh, marketing, IT security, and public administration. So I'll go through all three concentrations, excuse me, but um, I will start with the core program and sort of how it out uh, the outline of it. So first you have your online courses. Um, the foundation program, we have Business 240, which is a statistics class that's self-paced. Um, if you've taken statistics, you can probably wave out of it. Um, then we have your the four online courses that you're going to be doing um, are through UpGrad. Um, that's your core. Um, so the first one is my course. That's Intro to Project Management. And that is what I called, we could call traditional project management or plan-driven project management or waterfall project management. That is project management methods for when you have um, known outcomes, such as things like building a bridge or a building where it's like, we know what we're building and we're, um, we have some fixed stages. Um, then we have Agile Pro Management for Project Managers, PM342. And this is what I was saying, those other techniques, which um, are more, it's more of a collaborative and a little more fle flexible for when you're developing things like a new, um, a new web application where you, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty and it builds structure into the uncertainty and there's a lot of collaboration. Um, so that's an excellent class. Then we have PM344, Program of Portfolio Management. And that is a program and portfolio management is really important to understand the strategic part of project management because it's how businesses um, use projects at the higher level to drive business value. So it's sort of the organization of your project management. And then project risk management. And I probably don't in a 
like with all the stuff going on in the world, I can tell you project risk management is just a really great class because so much of being a project manager is foreseeing risks and making sure that companies steer clear of problems resulting from risks. So that is um, those four classes. And then let's talk about study abroad. So study abroad, you will have two additional core courses. One is another project management course. It's the advanced, pro advanced project finance and control. And that's more of a deeper dive to, from the intro to PM class. Um, and it you know, includes finance, includes more detailed budgeting, finance, um, schedule management, that kind of thing. Um, then there's MSBA 328. MSBA is a business analytics class. It's visualization and communication. So it's not really business analytics. It's Tableau reporting. And um, it's been um, it's in the program because project managers, a huge part of project management is you get a lot of complex data that you need to provide to senior executives and to stakeholders in a um, in a compelling way. And so that's what this class is all about. I think we could all agree in the modern world, this is a challenge for all of us. How do we all get a lot of difficult, complex information? How do we communicate that clearly and, and, and in an appealing way to others? Then we have your concentration concentration courses, and I'll go into the, each of the concentrations in the subsequent slides. Finally, there's the capstone, and I will go into that for future in the, in the other slides. Capstone is either you take a course that's a capstone course or else an internship. Let me go into more detail with the, each of the concentrations. So first we have the IT security concentration, that's nine units. You start out with a required course, that's ITM 300. IT management and digital transformation in the business enterprise. It's an overview of um, the management view of IT and also, again, digital transformation, as it says. Then you have um, elective courses, two of three different, there's three different securities classes, and you can choose two of them. And I, I don't need to necessarily go into the details of the specifics, but um, they all have a little slightly different angle. Okay. Then we have our marketing concentration, also nine units. Um, the required course there is marketing management, which is, you know, an, sort of an overview of all things marketing. For our elective courses, um, there's three different offerings that you can choose from. Two are more on the social media, um, social network angle, and then there's one that's a product uh, decisions course. Then finally, the third concentration is public administration. It's 12 units. I know that's sort of strange. It's this still has just three classes, so it's really not more courses. It just has to do with the uh, public administration has a different way they um, they they number their units. Uh, so not to fear, it's not actually more work. Um, so the first required course, the required course is EMP 300, um, which is theory, ethics, and practice in public service. And then there's electives, a lot of different electives, public policy and analysis, um, Pro, pro, public, public enterprise management and public sector business relations, budgeting and financial management, public service and the law, and personal management and labor relations. Then finally, the capstone, and I think this is probably one that's probably very interesting to all of you. So the choice is you either can take the capstone course, which is a course that culminates everything you learn in the other classes, or you can choose to do an internship, which or your CPT, that's PM398. Um, and this is a way you get credit for your job experience. Um, here's just a sampling of a couple companies that students got internships with recently. Um, Samsung's a household name, but those others you might not have heard of. And that's one of the things about the Bay Area. There's a lot of big companies and little companies. Um, we do not just provide the internship for you, but is absolutely we provide support to you. And um, we have some resources. In fact, what I wanted to sh share with you is a slide about our career advising services. So right out of the gate, when students come here, we have an orientation with our career services. Um, we have one-to-one -one career consulting. We have workshops and webinars and networking events and other things. So I'll explain a little bit about that. Um, but just to say, if you're... Um, you know, if you don't find an internship, then there's always the capstone course. Some students, by the way, um, it's up to you. Sometimes what students do is they opt to just do the capstone course, and then you still can get a job opportunity afterwards. So when you know, it kind of depends, because sometimes um, students may say, uh, choose to do the internship, because and um, but sometimes the right opportunity doesn't come along, and then they decide to focus on their OPT, which is their job after the program, which I'll tell you in a minute. 
I also wanted to add about all the great networking at Golden Gate University. One of the things that makes us special is, again, we're in Northern California. We have 8,000 members in PMI chapters. This picture is from a networking event with um, both students and professional project managers for the PMI San Francisco chapter. There's also a lot of agile organizations. Um, and we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about biopharma because biopharma med tech's a huge industry here. So we have groups doing that. We also have some group, uh, other groups like with quality and business analysis. One of the things I've learned from some of the upfront students who've come here, there's a lot of different professional groups. So like if you came from marketing or if you came from some other field, you may, you're, you'll may you definitely find some great networking opportunities. But these are the ones that are project management specific. We have a very strong relationship with the PMI San Francisco chapter. There's also a PMI Silicon Valley chapter. And in fact, I just spoke to that chapter. They had a big symposium that I was at um, like a couple of weeks ago in Santa Clara. All right, so now I'm going to get into career opportunities in the Bay Area and um, sort of career opportunities in the Bay Area for project management and kind of what to expect. So just to say project management is booming in the Bay Area. Um, this is a STEM degree. So this means you have up to three years of OPT. OPT meaning three years you can work here in the U.S. without worrying about sponsorship or anything like that. There's a lot of different opportunities across industries. So I'm going to so I'm going to talk, here's, 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 here's how I'm going to organize the rest of my talk. I'm going to talk generally about sort of PM career moves. Then I'm going to give a little bit of an industry overview, talk about opportunities by concentration. And then I'm going to mention about the tech sector and biopharma and med tech. So in terms of career moves, I know there's a big group here. And I know from experience with Upgrad, you all may come from different experience. So as far as what are the opportunities? Well, it depends on where you start. I know a lot of you are very experienced. So now if you're someone who already has project management experience, that's great. You can grow in your career. So you might, this coming here might be a step towards promotion or more complex projects, or you might end up in program management um, that, that, you know, or you might be able to pivot to a different industry. So you might have PM experience in one field and maybe you come here and find experience in another field. That's one of the things in the US, um, people do understand a, a pivot. You know, we are in the land of change here. Now, if you're someone who's not a project management professional with a lot of experience, that's great too. You can make a career change. Um, this could be a real step to pivot to project management. I find um, when you have a, in some sort of specific experience in pivot, the best thing to do is to look for something um, in a field that's similar to what your experience is. So for instance, if you are someone with a marketing background, you could find a product management role or customer success management role, which is marketing related, which combines your, your skill set. And then I'm guessing there might be some people who don't have a ton of experience or are new to the world of work, and that's fine. Um, this degree could be a great step for the um, for your first PM or tech job. Some of the kinds of jobs you might look for would be like junior PM, project coordinator, some sort of analyst role, or a functional tech position. Here's just a list of just general industries using project management. It kind of covers the gamut. I mentioned these because I know everyone's focused on tech and I know Google's here and uh, Meta's here, and but you know, all these industries require project managers. So for instance, I've had students in the automotive industry. I have students in the banking industry. I've had students from um, doing event planning and the entertainment. Um, yeah, I had a student who during the height of pandemics is American, but she had been involved in the Southwest Southwest. Um, festival, which is this massive music festival, and everything closed down from the pandemic, so she came to the program. So uh, real estate, healthcare, all these things, I've had students in these programs. So no matter what your field that you come from, there might be an opportunity. And I like to say, can you think of an industry that would not need project management? Okay, but let's dive into the concentrations, because that's probably one of the things you really want to hear about. So I'm going to talk, go concentration by concentration. So first, there's the public administration concentration. Um, now, the EMPA program is not only government, because you think public administration, you think government, but it's also about governance, governance and public service. So it also includes urban affairs and ur urban public service. Um, major Bay Area companies seek professionals in senior roles with these skills. So examples would be a government affairs or public relations officer. This is an executive program. Um, it's one of our, uh, you know, I would say our landmark programs here at GGU. Students tend to have significant work experience, so the people you'd be in with and your classmates are really incredible. The faculty all have 10 plus years of public service experience, a number in highly visible roles, and some are published authors. 
Um, in terms of marketing, there's a lot going on with marketing and project management. Um, so industries include the biopharma industry and technology industry, which I'm going to get into on their own slides. In terms of biopharma with marketing positions, there could be bi biopharmaceutical advertising, medical device and MarTech project management. In technology industry, um, marketing positions could include product management, digital marketing, and customer success management. And here's some sample roles for senior positions, media project manager, packaging engineer, and digital program manager. And then I just have this additional slide as well, because project management and marketing has become the dynamic duo. There's really a trend to combine project management and marketing because of past or business cycles. Companies can't afford to have project management being separate from marketing. Back when I started, project managers really executed the project, and then someone else was in charge of marketing and the product. No one has time for that anymore. So there's a lot of combination. So all marketing is project driven and a lot of marketing companies are looking for people with project management. And in the same time, project managers are expected to be customer and product centered. Um, agile methods also are very customer and product centered. So that's the other thing that agile techniques really is expecting you to have that. Um, and here's, here's some job titles of project management jobs requiring marketing and sales, product manager, product owner, and customer success manager. Um, and then I would just, but my final comment on the slide is just, I've really seen an increase here at GGU just generally of students either from, who are from marketing and creative skills, uh, I'm sorry, marketing and creative fields who are coming to the program who are saying they realize they need project skills to be successful within marketing. Okay, let's talk about IT security. I think we all know about the need for IT security because we've all had breaches and things, right? Um, security and digital communication are part of all projects today. So if you think about it, if any kind of project, not just technology, even business, everyone's having to think about security. Security threats to business processes and data have created a need to act by companies and exciting careers in the project management world. Um, career opportunities span both public sectors, so that could be government, schools, and hospitals, but also private sectors, healthcare companies, banks, tech firms. Roles may be managing security projects, so you might be managing a security project, but it also could be operational, so like managing security processes. Um, and then the leading edge of IT projects for this is Sec DevOps, which is a combination of security, development, and operations along with project management. And these types of positions um, are open to project managers with companion IT and security knowledge. Um, I definitely would say having a security concentration like would, would be a really good combination because um, a lot of times project managers are generalists, but if you have like a good background, you could get your foot in the door. And um, the program at GGU gives students this triple play of skills to be a leader in this industry transformation incurring in all industry segments. I'm going to get into um, IT project management and biopharma as well. So IT project management, we don't have an IT management, project management concentration, but that's okay because with the project management skills you'll be getting at GGU and your background, um, just to say there's always a ton of opportunities within technology for project managers. Um, technology deployment has always needed project managers. So my background, I was a did not have a technical background, but I was an IT project manager within banking, um, within banking operations. So um, some of the kinds of positions uh, would be innovation, release management, software deployment, testing, and more. Um, trends, new job titles reflect a combination of tech and PM roles. So you aren't always going to see these listed as project manager. If you look out on LinkedIn or Indeed or somewhere else, you'll see TPM is a very big role, technical program manager, and other roles such as implementation manager, service delivery manager, or release manager. And one of the trends I've noticed that's really pretty exciting is um, if you end up in a startup, a lot of times as a project manager, you can end up sort of building things from scratch. I've uh, had a lot of colleagues who got hired by smaller companies who have been told, hey, you're a project manager. We need you to build our PMO or our program management office, or we don't have a PM software tool. We need you to get that, get choose the tool and get it adopted for us. So lots of opportunities there. Um, and just generally, project manager is really booming in the tech sector. Um, the U.S. government regards IT project management as a STEM degree for good reason. So I know that like a lot of you, whatever your business area, remember technology is embedded within that. So don't rule out um, a tech 
project management role, even if that's not your background. And um, those of remember one of the things I like to say is um, you do not have to be super techie to be in a technical project because I always think of a, a conductor of an orchestra. A conductor of an orchestra does not need to know how to play the oboe to conduct the orchestra. They just need to understand the music and understand where everyone's parts are. Not, so my last field I want to share with you is the biopharma and med tech field. This is really big in the Bay Area, lots and lots of opportunities. So it started out with um, big pharma. So companies like Gilead Sciences that's headquartered here, Genentech that started here, BioMarin. Um, and so that's, and, and Bayer's here. Um, I can name, there's a lot of pharmaceutical companies here. Um, but in the meantime, um, you know, as those biopharma companies run out of the obvious solutions, you know, because they used to have these very long pipelines and it took many, many years to develop drugs. Um, but, you know, the obvious drugs have been developed. And so now there's all sorts of alternate um, therapies such as gene therapy. Um, and so there, uh, there's a lot of smaller startup companies. It's a real exciting area. Plus medical devices. There's a lot of medical devices and sort of these combination um, kinds of things. Um, and, and there's also, and also I would just say related, what I don't have on the slide is healthcare. So, uh, hospitals, uh, uh, um, you know, and ma massive healthcare companies like UCSF is a big hospital medical, uh, me medical, um, company that's here as well. Um, and I just want to say, once again, you do not have to have a science or clinical background to have these jobs. So for instance, there's a huge need in clinical clinical trial coordination. Um, you do not need to be a scientist because it's all project management. It is overseeing clinical testing and such and, and rollout of, of and drug testing. It could be uh, clinical trials and going through FDA approval, for instance. There's also a lot of marketing and sales um, positions again um, and and supply chain because um those medications and other things need to be got get got getting to people and there's also portfolio management and pmo um some of those people i was telling you who are in startups where they're having to build pmos are within the biopharma field and um this little flyer here that's from last year but that's a annual biopharma med tech project management pro, 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 project and portfolio management conference that i attend each year I'm actually going in a couple of weeks as a, um, normally I'm a speaker, but one of my colleagues is speaking. So I have a lot of information. I'm assuming we have some questions. Um, that is all I have in my presentation and I'm happy to answer questions and I will just stop sharing my screen. Sure, thank you uh, so much, Marie. I think that was a very elaborate presentation and thank you for walking us through the entire program, the concentrations, uh, I think uh, through this entire presentation, what I've come to gather is that it's often a misconception that project management is only for tech professionals. Uh, and like, you know, the two other concentrations that we have also yes. marketing and public administration would mean that project management is more of a skill, uh, which is also, you know, which is an industry which is also open for people coming from other backgrounds. So thanks for yeah, the and I would just like to I would just like to add that um one of the things um is that technology companies are businesses. Yes. So you know, like a company like Google, um, not everyone it doesn't just have software engineers. You know, they need people who are doing marketing, they need HR people, they need people who are finance people, they need people who are operations people. So, but you said it very well, Rocky. Um, but all you know, also I think people need to understand that all those kind of business functions um require projects and so Absolutely. yeah yeah mm -hmm. and uh you know so, so you you have covered through the course of the curriculum certain kind of core skills that a uh, project management professionals ought to have whether it's your hard or technical skills and your soft skills communication collaboration so on and so forth now here uh for our learners i i I also think that this is a question which has come up from them. I really want you to throw some light on how critical is it for learners in addition to doing this degree program in project management to take up certifications in areas like agile management or scrum or waterfall, which happen to be the latest technologies. Yeah. Oh, sure. I'm always happy to answer that question. I started to, but that's a big one. So yeah. one of the things I would, yeah. So one of the things I would say is having this, um, Let's see. So what, you know, here's the funny, so here's, I'll tell you a little bit about 
project management certification. So the gold standard is the PMP. That's the one that's um and um and that's the one that's been around forever and it's the one that's most recognized. And PMP now does include agile. Here's the funny thing about agile though. The reason I mentioned that is there are a million and one agile certifications. So I'm guessing of those of you out there, it's very confusing. I have certified Scrum Master. Um, nothing special about that. That's the one I have, but there's discipline agile, safe, um, all these other ones. Here's the thing that's most important to employers. What they want to know is, do you understand the terminology and the environment? Um, can you speak the language? So, uh, and also what your experience is. So this is what I find, um, you know, when you have a graduate degree, first of all, what I hear from recruiters in the U.S. is having a master's degree already sets you up, up, up one rung above. So that is always, especially a master's degree in a business field, that will put you a rung above. And then if you do something like this master's in project management, you will be you you'll have taken an agile a master's level agile course in a master's level set of curriculum. And so on your LinkedIn profile, et cetera, you'll have that master's degree, but also you'll be able to speak when you talk to interviewers, you speak the language of um the, the language and you under, you actually understand how it works. Here's the thing, um, recruiters can see through if you just get the certification and you don't have the skills behind it. Um, CSM, which I did get, of the certified right. scrum master, I took a two day class and I took a test. Now, I do have more of a background, but if someone just has CSM, they're, that's not gonna really get them the job. But um, anyway, so, you know, I would just say that, um, Definitely certification is a good thing to have. But what I find, here's what I'll tell you, because I've been running this program for about eight years. Um, a lot of my students do very well and never never do have to get the certification or they choose to do it later because what gets them the original job is the, the master's degree and the skills and the um, the skills and the knowledge they've learned. Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much for answering that because many of the learners, they have this question or they are in this dilemma that, yes, of course, you know, doing a degree program is going to require a larger investment in terms of what cost. And uh, there are obviously organizations which accept you with a PMP certification or any additional certifications without you having a degree. So is that yeah. a replacement or does it suffice? Yeah, I mean, you just want to say, if you're someone who has a lot of peer project, if you're Here's where PMP is valuable. If you're someone who has a lot of PM experience, yeah. um, definitely you want the PMP. And the reason is that is recruiters will filter or all the ATS screens will be based on the PMP. But okay. here's the thing to understand. If you're someone who really doesn't have project experience, recruiters will, people will see right through if you're someone who just has three years of just sort of okay experience and a PMP. Because all a PMP, all a PMP says is that you have three years of experience and you passed a test. You do have to demonstrate experience, but I like to say, well, it doesn't mean you did a really good job. Um, so it's just, anyway, I think the thing is um, a certification. So certification is definitely worthwhile with the experience. Yeah. Um, but what I would definitely say is if you're someone who doesn't have the experience, if you don't end up going for this program, which is fine, yeah. um, but definitely having some sort of actual hands-on training is important um, because the PMP sitting for like certifications it's just terminology, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for answering that, Marie. And sure. I can see that there are a lot, there are lots of questions coming from learners who are obviously coming from other backgrounds as well. And they hold okay. several years of experience. I'd like to take that up. But before that, for everyone who is new to Upgrad Abroad, and this is the very first time that you're attending a webinar. So I want to give you a broad overview of how this program is going to be structured. So this is a master's of project management, which comes with three concentrations. One is in IT security, one is in public administration, one is in marketing, which Marie has very elaborately explained. The entire program is for 18 months for a total of 30 credits where essentially you are going to be doing the initial six months online uh, from India on GGU's platform. And you are going to be taught by GGU faculty, as Marie has also explained. And, you know, she has uh, given us an insight into the program that she herself is going to take up. Once you do this program online, you are going to take 12 credits. And this is a credit transfer program. So this, this means that you will pursue the remaining 18 credits uh, on campus at Golden Gate University. For everyone who has asked, just to reiterate, it is a STEM uh, program, irrespective of it having a public administration or uh, uh, let's say marketing concentration, which will give you one plus two years of OPT. 
and uh, if if uh, since some of you have asked as to what is the fee of this program so the fee is um, it's approximately $15,000 when it comes to the tuition at Golden Gate University for 12 months and the living cost it varies but you know you are you can be expected to spend anywhere between $20,000 to $21,000 the 6 months of program at GGU, which you will be doing online initially, is for four lakhs. So that is uh, how I would say it, it's cost effective because of the fact that you are uh, doing it in less than 15 lakhs in terms of the tuition. And of course, you, you know, like Marie has so nicely explained, you are, uh, you know, throwing yourself open to jobs uh, which which is at you know jobs in silicon valley where the latest innovations are happening especially with respect to this industry so that is with respect to the program and i would like to take up the first uh, question which is who which is from rashid shaikh for you marie and that is okay. he has uh, 15 years of experience so um, can he join this course and uh, you know how, how would the roadmap look like for him presuming he's coming from a different background. Okay, and different background. It's okay. Yes. So you, well, great. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, it doesn't say which background. Yeah, but I'm assuming it would be Rashid. Different. Rashid, you can uh, clarify that for Marie. Yeah, Rashid, if you, I mean, there's definitely opportunities, but I'd love to hear, I'd love to be more helpful by understanding what your background actually is. All right. We can take up the next question while Rashid replies. Okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, this is from somebody who's uh, not mentioned their name, but they have 17 years of work experience. And out of that, 10 years into project management as a PMP certified project manager. Oh, great. Right. And uh, their question is, do you accept change of status, even if I start the program with change of status as F1? Since I am in the U.S., and will not be able to travel to my country for F1 visa interview. So I'm looking for a change of status without going out of the US. This is the question. I'm, you know, I'm not the expert at that. Um, you know what, Raki, I don't know if we could keep some of those questions because yeah. um, there's people here at GGU who are like experts in some of the F1 sure. visa questions. And I I don't know the answer to that. So it's not, with, but I understand the start this, you're in the U in the U.S. already on the F1 visa. I mean, we certainly do have students at GGU who are here on an F1 visa. Um, the one other thing I would say is, if you already have a PMP certification, um, we we can waive out of um, the one of the courses because if you already have the PMP certification, that's I don't know that we well, at least at least for if you're here, the upgrade program is different. But anyway, I don't want to answer that, but um. Definitely, yeah. Rocky. Let's make sure we get that question answered separately. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, what I could uh, suggest is, you know, we do have we've placed a link on the chat box. You could get in touch with one of our counselors, and uh, they will route you to our visa. Yes, team. that's the best. I think that's the best route. Yeah, we can definitely do that. I hope that yeah. answers the question. The other uh, question: How much is the course fee? I believe that that is something we've answered. It's fifteen thousand dollars approximately for twelve months at GGU. The next question is, um, you know, you're a set of questions from a learner. And okay. the first question is, is this course suitable for non-tech background people? That's number one, which I think has fairly- Yes, absolutely. Answered. Okay. Well, take it up. Does this course require prior technical knowledge or any specific tech language? Uh, then the, th the second, third question from them is, during the course, will students work on real-time life projects to put theoretical knowledge into practical environment? And can I pursue a business um, analyst pro, you know, role after doing this program? Okay, all yeah. great questions. So first of all, you do not need a technical background. There's um, all the courses, like the project management courses are all project management. And even if you were to do like the IT security concentration, that IT management 300 course, it's it's all sorts of people take it. It's also in the MBA program. So, um, you know, we're a business school. So um, everything we do, there's nothing that's engineering here. And just to say, I don't didn't really mention about my background. So my undergraduate degree was in rhetoric and and with a French minor. So I did not have any technical background in, in, as an undergrad. And I did an MBA and I did sort of an IT management course. It's a lot like this. Um, and then it sounds like you're wondering about um analyst an analyst role 
Um, absolutely, actually, a, an analyst role is a good place to start. Um, I think I missed one of the questions, but definitely, um, I think I mentioned my slides, but definitely one of the kinds of roles that students can end up with or graduates can end up with is some sort of business analyst sort of role. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to just get a project management role because being in doing a business analyst role, tech writing, those kind of things can definitely be opportunities. Did I miss? I feel like there was something else the person asked, and I feel like right. I'm not sure. There was one additional question it, that is with respect to would they also have a chance to work on real time projects? Oh, the real time projects. Does it come so, with the CPT? Um, yeah. So, so, well, so of course there's the chance of doing CPT within yeah. all our class, within our classes you do sort of, you start with sort of hypothetical projects where you're kind of working through a project, student projects with teammates. But the other thing is we have this amazing partnership with the PMI San Francisco chapter where yeah. um, you can volunteer for the PMI San Francisco chapter and help organize their events. They have actually a big annual meeting coming up in a couple of weeks. And we have a couple of student volunteers who are involved in that. We have also this really amazing thing through them called Next Generation Leader Let's Jam. And it's a sort of hackathon where students are put on um, tasks with some big project that the chat that the chapter needs to have done, whether it's social media marketing or other things. And then you're um, si uh, lined up with mentors and you're actually coming up with a solution for that project. So, yeah, so we actually do have hands on um that's part of the nature of GGU. The other thing is all our professors are um, in the industry. So Ronnie Girola, who teaches the risk class, he's a cybersecurity program manager at Visa. So you also will get be learning from people who are in the industry. Absolutely. I think that's the best part about Golden Gate, uh, how you are so strategically located. And, you know, since we we just brought up Golden Gate University, Marie, if you could also uh, give the learners a little bit of insight as to uh, how the GGU alumni network looks like and uh, speak a little oh, bit sure. more about what kind of companies hire GGU grads and in what kind of roles. Okay. Wow, big one. Also, a little bit about Golden Gate University. We've been around for a very long time. So um, very well known in the Bay Area. We've been around since 1970, like the early 1900s. So Golden Gate, we're not named after the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, we predate the Golden Gate Bridge. We were wow. started in the YMCA on Golden Gate Street. Uh, so the thing is, this GG has a really great reputation and, and, um, and then has always served the adult learner. So it started out as a place for um, people who, you know, for some reason weren't able to finish their college degree. I think it started out as a law school. So we also have a law school. Um, so, uh, but anyway, we have about 60,000 alumni around the Bay Area. Um, you know, we one of the advantages of being GG is not just the companies that come to us, but also we have a lot of working adults who, who you will get to meet in your courses. So um, I was mentioning Biopharma. So we have you know a lot of you know people at places like Gilead and Genentech. But we also have um, definitely I've had students. I've had students from Meta, and I've had students at Google. And um, and then as far as some of the recent jobs where students have landed job places, students have landed jobs. I couple students to land jobs at Amazon. I just heard from a student who landed a job at Walmart corporate. Um, there's just a lot of different. Um, I, so I would just say, you know, one of the advantages um, is our in, in, of our alumni is the fact that like if you're um, from GGU and you're on LinkedIn, you might be connected with folks there. And also we're doing a lot more um, now that we're back from the pandemic. Thank goodness we are doing networking events and such. We have the chance to meet alumni and network with them. So because we do have on campus networking events. But yeah, I mean, I would just say you might not have heard of Golden University where you are, but here in the San Francisco Bay Area, we do have a real reputation um, as the place for working adults. And also companies do know that we have these practitioner professors and they know if people come to GGU that they have real world experience. Sure. Thank you so much, Marie. In fact, Golden Gate University, I, I believe it's the number one for working professionals. Yes. Yeah, yeah. we got we got awarded as the number one for adult learners for about oh, four years. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, exactly. Great. I, will, I think that would explain that, you know, what kind of uh, orientation yeah there in the curriculum exactly uh, in the interest of time i want to take up the next couple of questions okay and these are very domain specific questions uh sure. very interesting questions uh so there is somebody who is actually coming from a legal background and uh, they're a oh. law graduate Tane, okay. and uh, they want to switch to project management so their mm -hmm. question is how the roadmap is going to be i'm going to uh tie another question to that and okay. uh 
that is from somebody who is coming with another interesting background and that is BSc in interior designing. So Oh, I love it. I love it. So first of yeah. all, I've had students who have an interior design background. I've right. so I will dress a lot too. But um, I've had a number of students from architecture, interior design it is a great combination to have that, um, you know, and here in the Bay Area, I didn't really talk about construction, but absolutely there's construction, there's corporate real estate, but also with the design background, you you know, you might even um, translate into web design and things like that. But um, absolutely, that's a great background to have. Um, then as far as law, yeah, you know, the thing I actually... Um, the thing about law is law is all project driven. So if you have a, uh, first of all, you're a great communicator because you have to have those amazing, really fantastic writing skills, communication skills, but also you, you have to be able to meet deadlines and all those things. So the skills are there. Um, you know, if one of the things about having the law background is companies, all companies have legal departments and compliance departments and regulatory departments. So that would be an easy pivot. Um, but also, you know, you could even do a concentration in some, I would just also encourage, like, let's say I don't want to do the law more. I'm tired of it. Well, then do a marketing concentration, IT security, one of the other concentrations. And with that here in the U.S., you could leverage that. And I would just say, um, I give a talk about career branding for project managers. And the thing that you would just focus on in your resume and LinkedIn profile is those great project skills you have from your law background. And that could really end up getting you a completely different job. I mean, that's one of the things I think that's exciting in the U.S. That's maybe a little different than other places, especially in Silicon Valley. So, yeah, I love I think having a law background is a great background for a lot of things. Sure. Thank you so much, Marie. And uh, as a follow up to the one on uh, to the question on coming from a law background, the question also asks that. Uh, do they require management experience, certain management experience? Hmm. What if they come from a, you know, let's say a dispute resolution background? So with okay. that. Sure. And, you know, honestly, we have people at all levels. Um, Some people have never been a manager before. We're all yeah. the same. You know, everybody's equal. Um, First, no, but actually that that's the whole reason that you want to go to a graduate business um, education is you grow those leadership skills. So when you come here, so first of all, uh, you learn that, you know, we do a lot of case studies where we sort of have hypothetical management situations. We talk about what would you do? You also have student projects where you're collaborating. But the other thing is we have student leadership roles like the student government. And I was mentioning about the project management volunteering. All of those things give you these opportunities to grow your leadership skills. So 100 percent why do people come for graduate business education? They want to go to the next level. So absolutely, there's a lot of folks in lower level roles, entry level roles who use this um, type of job, I'm sorry, to use this kind of schooling to grow your leadership skills. And, um, you know, and, and definitely I would encourage that. Uh, I would just say personally as a project manager, it's one of those things where you grow in increments, right? So you're not going to just get a project manager job out of the green gate. So like when I started as a junior PM, I got hired as a junior PM assisting a project manager. Then I got went into smaller projects and then eventually bigger ones. So um, definitely you could start at any level. And I'm, I would encourage those, those of you, I, I love it when people answer, ask a question like that, because I'm sure there are other people in the same situation. Absolutely. This is an excellent program for that. Yes, exactly. It's it's a highly versatile program. And uh, you are very right when you say there are so many learners like that, because I the next two questions are also from two people who have very interesting backgrounds. One of them is a veterinary doctor, and uh, they have 13 years of work experience. They have completed a master's, uh, and they'd like to join the course. So oh, uh, great. Wow, that's a first. Well, so first of all, I love people with different backgrounds and I'm a big animal person. So I think that's wonderful. Um, yeah, absolutely. So veterinary doctors. So you remember I was mentioning biopharma and med tech that someone with a vet, if, if you're interested, like depending. So if you if you love animals, and you want to do some animal related. Boy, there's a lot of um, animal comp animal related companies, um, businesses, um, definitely in the tech space, things like um uh, rover.com and all those things but also with the medical because you have a medical background there could be a lot of opportunities within that biopharma and med tech space um someone with that background that would be a great pivot so yeah great. Love it. thank you i i hope that answers your questions they were answer the question. and uh the other question that we have is from an automobile engineer 
who is, has mm-hmm. two years of experience in marketing and sales uh, is this okay. master's suitable for them uh, and uh, what are the placement stats of golden gate university is his follow up question you know i unfortunately do not have placement stats so um you know one of the things so first of all just to say boy if you have an autom- uh, automobile engineering background we have one of the things i didn't even mention is all the self driving car companies in the bay area i think there's like 50 Um, It's a little scary to me, actually, because I saw a talk and like to realize how many self-driving cars are running around that I didn't know. So um, definitely there's a lot of opportunities. I, you know, I don't have placement stats. Here's what I will tell you. Um, You know, we've been, we, GGU specifically, um, well, a lot of schools really had a decline in international students over the last few years. You know, first there was the Trump administration and then the pandemic. So um, I don't have statistics, but also we're really in growth mode. Um, yeah. So, but anyway, I would just say definitely for someone with an automobile engineering background, there's definitely, there's opportunities. There's opportunity. Great. Thank you, Murray. And, uh, as we close, come to a close for this webinar, we have another four minutes and, uh, I, I just take up last two questions. Uh, but before that, I want to tell all the learners who are present that I have, uh, placed a link through which you can get connected to any of our counselors. So I, I can see that there are a lot of questions on visa. Some of you, uh, you know, have inquired about an F1 visa. You've also inquired about CPT, OPT options, and in general about education in the US. Please do get in touch with our counselors and uh, they will route you through the visa team and, and you will, uh, you know, you, you could get your answers there. But for Marie, uh, you know, I have two questions which are related to academics. And one of them is, of course, um, you know, with respect to the logistics. And uh, the question is from Sri Harsha that what would be the class timings, whether it's going to be full time or any specific days and time, uh, and uh, you know, let's say time. The other thing is, uh, the other question is uh, for, with respect to your marketing concentration. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of our learners want to know, you know, how would that trajectory look like, uh, you know, if, if they were to go ahead with a marketing concentration. Oh, okay. Yeah. Those are so as far as logistics, so obviously the first four classes you take online in your own time and all yeah. that, um, you know, and those are self-paced, but then there's some live sessions on the weekends, mainly on the weekends. Um, then once you're going to get university, I probably should have said, um, that's a good thing for next time. Um, it's really two semesters. So you have, uh, when you come here, you will end up having um, two semesters, each of which with three courses. Um, and um and then, and then that's a full, that's uh, nine units and that's considered a full-time load. Although I, I, I was just realizing, so that's th- that you can do it that way. You could also, there is the option of fewer of uh, six, you, six units is now full-time. So you could stretch that out depending. Um, the one thing to know is if you do an internship, um, then that factors in. So if you're, um, What generally happens with upgrad students is you do two semesters, three courses each. Um, You know, as you remember, you have a 1 p.m. course and a core, and uh, you have a, you you have core courses to complete, and then you have the concentration. So how you do that is kind of depends on, you'll be end up talking to an advisor because the concentration courses, um, you know, you usually have a first course and then subsequent courses. And then when you're doing the internship, if um, you're doing the internship and you're taking classes while you're doing the, there's sort of, this is one of those things where there's rules, those F1 visa rules. The way it works with the CPT is if you're doing that class on its own, you can do 40 hours a week work. If you're taking the internship course with other classes, um, then um, then you only can do 20 hours a week. What I would just say is in terms of um, how that would look like, specifically that will get to you know rocky i'm glad you pointed people's enrollment counselors when you get to ggu they'll sort of map out how it's going to work with your class schedule but i'll just say generally um it's six to nine units per semester that you would be taking full time as full-time students um yeah hopefully that answers the question all right great thank you marie and as i can see we finished right on time uh so thank you so much for taking out time out of your schedule and this has been incredible it's it's been a highly informative session and i'm sure everyone has uh, greatly benefited from it uh as a final thought do you have anything that you'd like to share with our learners 
I just wanted to thank all of you for coming. And I, I always like to say this when I um, have one of these kinds of webinars that um, I want to applaud all of you for investing in yourself. Uh, whether or not you go to this degree, I recognize that you've come to um, this um, the session because you wanted to um, grow. And so I just wish you the best in whatever your career journey, take wherever your career journey takes you. And thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marie. And thank you to everybody who's joined us today. We'd love to host you on our webinar the next time. And uh, please get in touch with our counselors for your queries. Like I've mentioned, I've put the details on the chat box. With that, wish you a very good night. And Marie, I believe it's the start of an early morning for you. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to grab my next cup of coffee. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes.